So Spike Lee just released a few weeks ago a new series on Netflix titled She's Gotta Have It and it's based off the film that he had in 1986 based off the same name. I heard a lot of people raving about it. Some people had some gripes but mostly people I know have said how much they loved it but I wanted to see the original film before I saw the new Netflix original series. So how did I think about it? Well my name is Brendan Keith Avery and this is just my opinion. Hey guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for She Has Gotta Have It, the, 96, the 1986 version, not the Netflix original that came out this year. I really do appreciate it, but before I get into the review, help your boy out by going ahead and subscribing to this channel. Also, click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads, and also give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. So, Netflix has been doing their thing with all this original content, I believe, in two 2018 they're going to have 80 new netflix original uh, films and series coming to their platform which is great i love uh, new material as most people do and it's the benefit that you get to watch it at home and spike lee i'm pretty sure you've heard of this director before he has a uh, like 76 uh directing credits writing credits producing credits uh, credits etc that has to do with films tv series documentaries and shorts and this one is she has got to have it which came out in 1986 and it is is his second uh film in his whole filmography and um it's only an hour and 24 minutes as far as the content is concerned um the things that happen on screen are just as interesting as the everything that happened off screen as well and i want to talk about all of that um if you know spike lee's work you know that he's very very you know unconventional he makes films and does pieces of artwork he's an artur he does pieces of artwork any none like any other filmmaker um but he was actually taught by martin scorsese and one thing that stood out to me in this film is of course we're in 2017 and we're used to seeing films in color but of course this like i said came out in 1986 and 90% of this film is done in black and white and uh, a small portion of it is done in color and when that color popped on the screen it really did you know speak volumes did pop it was full of color and i like that contrast one reason that that's important to me and the reason why i brought it up as far as martin corsese is concerned is that uh martin corsese's film a raging bull that came out in 1980 that film was predominantly shot in black and or filmed in black and white and shown in black and white and that had one uh, uh scene that was uh full of color as well and uh, Scorsese taught um, Spike Lee in uh, NYU. And so, you know, I just thought that was interesting, you know, uh, when I was looking up some information on this film. Something else, the budget of this movie was only $175,000. Um, it was filmed in 12 days. The budget was so tight. And this is really fascinating to me that there was no retakes in this whole entire movie. And the budget was so tight as well that when the cast was taking breaks, Spike Lee made sure that they didn't throw away the aluminum cans that had soda because he wanted the recycling money for it. So just from like, a, you know, a penny pension guy, there's nothing wrong with that. Just trying to save money and, you know, do his thing with a tight budget. I really do respect that. And that's just something that I had to mention. But about the movie itself, um, it's like I said, it's called She's Gotta Have It. And what it's about is there is a character by the name of Nola Darling. And, you know, she is, um, she doesn't like being labeled. She doesn't like being called a freak or anything like that. You know, these labels that society can sometimes put on women. And it just goes back and forth with, you know, telling the story from her perspective of her three lovers and not just her perspective, but her lovers as well, plus her surrounding friends. And immediately when the film started out, something that I liked about it is, you know, know that she talks to you, the honest member. This film breaks the fourth wall like Deadpool out of a comic book or something like that. And, you know, I, I really do like that. And sometimes it can work on screen and sometimes it doesn't, but it does work well um, in this film. And I'm imagining that that's going to be taking place in a 2017 uh, remake of this movie that I'm really am looking forward to. But her three lovers is one gen gentleman uh, by the name of Jamie Mars and also Greer and Spike Lee. Not only is he a uh, actor. Uh, no, not only is he a director, producer, and writer, he is also an actor in this film and some of his other films as well. But he's in this role. Uh, he's in this film as uh, he's in this film as well as a character named Mars. And um, you know, Nola, she 
I don't want to say she's confused or whatever. And there's one, you know, I, I really did enjoy this film for the most part, but there's one thing that stood out to me that she kind of quoted in the beginning that it's not about control my body, my mind, or who is going to own it. You know, who's going to own it, them or me? I'm not a one man woman, period, you know, bottom line. And that's a great way to start out the film. But my only gripe is I'll get this out of the way is the film never really addressed it later on. I mean, she did kind of go to therapy one time and it was just kind of like, hey, you know, she's looking for love and just doesn't know how to handle it. And, you know, decipher which, you know, what kind of man she wants. But they never the film never did go back and address why she is doing this or whatever. But I still liked her character. I had so much respect for Nola's character because she is like one of the most honest women that I've ever seen in any TV show, any documentary, any movie ever or whatever. She didn't she wasn't rude or anything like that. She wasn't blunt. She was nice and calm, collected, you know, care of herself, um, you know, classy, you know, outside of the bedroom or even in the bedroom. You know, but she just, you know, she didn't hold back any punches. She was uh, with these men and these lovers that she was dealing with or whatever. She didn't, you know, she just was, she would tell them straight up like, look, you know, I'm seeing you right now. I may go see this other person tomorrow and I may go see this guy next week. You know, if you can deal with it, hey, great. If you can't, you know, there's the door. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's crazy. And for, you know, for Spike Lee to create a character and I don't know, I didn't find anything to say this was based off a true story or not, but for him to create a character like this and kind of in the late 80s or whatever, that's a bold move. I mean, we have a lot of characters like that in TV and movies today, so it's not like a new thing, but this thing came out in 1986, you know, and the acting was great. This can be described as like a serious um, sexy comedic drama and then it had all that I mean you know they had some decent sex scenes they even had some funny sex scenes to where one of her lovers was just like this muscle head jock you know loser that thought he was better than everybody and just you know thought that every woman should kiss his feet and this one scene when he was trying to give her the, you know they were trying to get it on or whatever I don't want to spoil it for you but I was just saying to myself like dude you are just loving yourself too much you know this is crazy you know, you need to, you know, put your ego aside or whatever. But like I said, I really did like Nola's character. Um, it was fascinating um, seeing her bounce back and forth between, uh, you know, all of her multiple lovers. You know, that was entertaining, too. And, I, you know, I think everybody should give this a chance because it's only an hour and 24 minutes. And you may even learn a lot from it. And I, I did I, I did speak about one great, but I will say something else is that I kind of think the way that the me and her lovers were chasing Nola was a little bit unrealistic. Never in my young 30 something years of life have I ever seen men fight so hard for one woman. I mean, yeah, I've, I've met a couple of guys growing up that were in like simpletons and were, you know, they, they were bend over backwards for a woman and, you know, it was kind of pathetic. Well, there were just a few scenes here where I was like, oh man, come on, guys. I mean, where's your dignity? Where's your self of pride? I mean, like, seriously, she is, I don't even want to say she's a player or a pimp or anything like that because she, th there was no deceit from her at all, you know? And there was like two scenes that I wanted to mention, but I, I, if you do try to watch it on Netflix, because this is on Netflix, Netflix as well, not just the original, you know, it will may, maybe have a more powerful impact for you. Um, but, you know, other than the film not necessarily addressing why Nola is not able to make a decision on who she really wants to be with. And I did find the men just being a, a little bit unrealistic. Everything else in this movie, you know, I really did enjoy and I, I pretty much loved. Um, if I were to rate She's Gotta Have It, the 1986 version, uh, out of a 1 out of 10, I would give this an 8 out of 10. Yes, an 8 out of 10. But guys, that's just my opinion. Have you seen She's Gotta Have It or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why. And still, give me the thumbs up. And constructive criticism, please. Uh, let's not be a-holes. Also, since you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you become one of my subscribers. Get all the content that I have to provide. Like I said, you can also click the bell so you can be notified when I do make uploads. Uh, you can go to my website, check me out there, bookmark it. Also, look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy for providing a link to all this good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, 
I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for She's Gotta Have It, the 1986 version directed, written, and produced and acted by Spike Lee. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.